Hello. In this video, we are going to add a feature to our Brick Breaker game. And simply, what we're going to do is we're going to have a little checkbox on the HTML page, on the web page, that if I select it, the paddle is going to automatically track the ball, meaning that I don't have to play it. This will allow me to kind of test some features pretty easily. So notice, if the check mark is on, the paddle tracks the ball. And if I turn it off, it stops tracking the ball. So I turn it off, it stops tracking. I turn it on, it starts tracking again. So to do this, the first thing we need to do is we have to add this element on the HTML page. So in, sorry, in the HTML code. So we're going to start off by adding what's called an input element. And specifically, the type of this input element is a checkbox. I'm going to copy this little line of code here. And I'm going to go back into my HTML. And I'm thinking we're going to come up here. Here's my fresh one I'm working on. And I'm simply going to paste this below the canvas. And now if I run this, you'll notice that I have a little checkbox. Now it doesn't do anything, it simply turns on and off. So the first thing I need to do is I need to tie this to a JavaScript function. If you wanted to, you could make this, this checkbox look bigger, um, give it various features, but we're not really interested in that. We simply want this to kind of be tied to a function that causes the paddle to track the ball. So to tie this to a function, what I do is I come up here and I add another kind of command, and it says it says on click. And on click, we're going to tie this to a function called click. So now we have this command called on clicked, or pardon me, I think it's actually on click. Yes, I had it right the first time, <laughs> on click. And we're going to tie it to a function called clicked. Now you you might already see the issue if I run this, and let's just run it to show it to everyone. If I run this and I select it, you'll notice that I pull up my console, I get an error. And what that error is essentially saying is, you've tied this, this element to a function that doesn't exist, so I don't know what to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come back into our program, and we're going to write a function called clicked. And here it is. Now, we could do console dot log and we're going to log and we're just going to write a clicked for now. So if I run this now and I pull up my console on the side, you'll notice that every time I click this, we see click appear in the in the console log. That's because every time it's running that function. This is great, but I wanted to do something more interesting. So we can go back into our program here. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a variable called, a Boolean variable called tracking. And what this variable does is, um, if it's true, the paddle tracks ball. So essentially, by initializing it to false, it means that the paddle um, is, is not going to be following the ball on the screen. But essentially, what will happen is when I select this, this, this checkbox, it's going to swap the the field the the field or the variable tracking from true to false or from false to true. Now the most basic way to do this is to say if tracking is equivalent to true, we're going to say tracking is equivalent to is equal to false. Else tracking is equal to true. So all this does, this is a quick way of just switching the state. We inspect the state, the state's true, so we change it to false. Otherwise it must be false, so we change it to true. And if we come down here and we print to the console the tracking command as well, and I give this a whirl, and I pull this up, you'll notice that every time I click this, you'll see that it's changing from true to false, true to false, true to false. Now this, this approach is great. But there's actually a nice shorthand that's really useful. Is You'll notice that if it's true, it just inverts it to false. And if it's false, it inverts it to true. So we can actually write a net. We can do this in one line. We can say tracking is equal to not tracking. So what this does is it says, if tracking is true, and we not it, it becomes false, and then we assign that back into tracking. If tracking happens to be false, and we not it, it becomes true, and we assign that back into tracking. And now let's give this a little space. OK. So what we need to do now is, if I run this, Essentially, when I click this, it needs to kind of get the paddle to track the ball. So, so how are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're simply going to 
when we're going to set it up such that when tracking is true, when it draws the paddle, it's going to first set the paddle X position to be relative to the X position of the ball. And by doing that, the paddle is always going to follow the ball around. But of course, we haven't actually done that yet. So if I minimize this and I come back and I scroll down, we'll find in our program we have a bunch of draw functions. So we have a draw function for the ball, a draw function for the paddle, which we're going to come back to in a second, a draw function for the bricks, draw score, draw lives, and then we have this generic draw, which is quite nice. So this is a nice way of breaking up the elements so it's a little easier to manage. So I'm going to come up to draw paddle, and essentially if tracking is equivalent to true, sorry, if tracking is equivalent to false, we're going to draw the paddle exactly the same way as we did before. So essentially, if tracking is false, I'm going to use the x and y position, the x position of the paddle, which is accessed using the mouse handler. And so right now, when I run the program, it will work exactly the same. But notice, the minute I select this, the paddle disappears. The reason the paddle disappears is because I've given the program instructions about how to draw the paddle when tracking is set to false, but I haven't given instructions how to draw the paddle when tracking is set to true. So I'm going to say if tracking, or I'm just going to make an else here. And so what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to take the paddle x, paddle dot paddle x, and I'm going to set that to the ball dot x. So what this is doing is says, okay, I want you to take whatever the current x position of the ball is, and I want you to make that the same of what the what the x position of the paddle is. And then I just draw it exactly the same. That's it. I have one little step. And so if I run this now, and I give this a whirl, it's tracking it, but I have a little bit of an issue. And what that issue is is that it dies every time it hits it. And that's actually happening because the ball is, is it's the leftmost side of the paddle that's actually being tracked. What I actually want to happen is I'd like the ball to match up with the center of the paddle so the ball and the paddle collision work properly. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take the X position of the paddle. I want to move the paddle to the, to the left so that the paddle sits underneath the ball. So we can see this paddle here. It'd be great if it was about half the width this way. And so to do that, I can simply take here and I can say minus paddle dot paddle width divided by two. Now if I run this, and I give this a select, it works. So now my, my paddle is actively tracking the ball. Now before I go, I just want to do one last thing here. Um, this is kind of just a nice little thing to think about when you're cleaning up your code. Notice we have an if statement here, and we have the exact same if statement here as well as there. So what I could do is I could actually take this, and I could paste it below. And so what happens now if I run this is it should run exactly the same. Notice I, I move it around, it catches it. If I tell it to track, sure enough, it tracks it. And what jumped out at me in this situation was the fact that this line of code was common to both those, both the if and the else. But now what I notice is that this is an empty if statement, which is kind of not great. What, what I really want to do is I only need to actually do some sort of modification to the paddle X in the case that tracking is true. So I'm actually just going to pull this back up. And I'm going to say if tracking is true. And only if it's true am I going to overwrite that paddle X position. I come over there and there you go. So this is a nice little way to optimize your processing of your code. You know, doing little programs like this, it has no real impact. But as your program grows and you do more complex things, it does start to have an impact on everything. Just one last little point. I always explicitly check true or false using equivalence. You can just say if tracking, and it works exactly the same. 
I hope this helped. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Have a wonderful day.